Chapter 36 Yellow Fang stood beside Ragged Star's body in the center of the camp while the cats of Shadow Clan filed out of their dens to sit vigil for their dead leader. Every cat's eyes held the same stunned expression, as if they couldn't believe that their leader was dead. The older warriors and elders in particular were struggling with grief. Ragged Star was leader for such a short time, Archai mewed. He should have cared for his clan for many seasons yet. How terrible to lose nine lives at once, Hollyflower murmured. Broken Tail was crouching beside his father's head with one paw resting on Ragged Star's cold fur. Those Wind Clan maggots must have been determined to send him to Star Clan, he rasped. Struggling to focus through her aching sadness, Yellow Fang padded to stand at Broken Tail's shoulder. You must go to Moonstone to receive your lives, she reminded him. You are leader of Shadow Clan now. Broken Tail looked up at her with fury in his eyes. I will not leave my father's body in the cold, he hissed. We will go tomorrow. Startled, I thought becoming leader was all he ever wanted. Yellow Fang didn't try to argue. She bowed her head. Of course, Star Clan will understand, she murmured. As dawn crept into the sky, the elders gathered around to carry Ragged Star's body outside the camp for burial. May Star Clan light your path, Ragged Star, Yellow Fang announced. May you find good hunting, swift running, and shelter when you sleep. She watched the elders bear their former leader's body away and felt a tremor of fear in her belly. If Wind Clan did this to us, we must prepare for war. Hearing angry voices, she noticed Scorch Wind and Blackfoot huddled beside Tanglebur and Cinderfur. Wind Clan might attack us at any moment, Cinderfur meowed. They'll think we're weak without a leader. What are we going to do? That's for Broken Tail to decide, Tanglebur reminded him. Her tail tip was twitching, but she was clearly trying to control her fury. But he can't do anything until he gets his nine lives. Then he needs to get a move on, Blackfoot hissed. We have to attack, Scorchwind declared. We can't let Wind Clan get away with this. Broken Tail, who had been watching his father's body vanish into the brambles, looked over his shoulder. Vengeance can wait until we have grieved, Scorch Wind, he murmured wretchedly. He seems further from launching an attack on Wind Clan than ever before, Yellowfang thought, not sure whether that was a good thing or not. Surely he wants to avenge Ragged Star's death. Returning to her den, she found Running Nose half-heartedly rolling more balls of moss for the store. Do you think Broken Tail even wants to be leader? he asked, echoing Yellowfang's own thoughts. He's only just become deputy, he sighed. It's a big responsibility for him. It will be difficult, Yellowfang admitted. But he is strong enough, she added. And he is not alone. We will be with him. He needs us to get him through this dark time. Most of all, he needs his mother. She left her den and went to find Broken Tail. He wasn't in the camp. Guessing where he might be, Yellowfang padded through the brambles and discovered him beside the mound of earth where Ragged Star was buried. He was staring at the soil, one huge paw resting on the disturbed leaves. Broken Tail, it's time for you to come to the Moonstone with me, Yellowfang mewed. Broken Tail started and looked up. It's too soon, he protested. Yellowfang shook her head. You cannot leave your clan without a leader. Broken Tail hesitated, then took a deep breath. Very well. I will do this for the clan. For my clan. He seemed sad and quiet as he patted at Yellow Fang's shoulder across the marshes. But when the Wind Clan tunnel came into sight, he halted with a flash of fury in his eyes. I will not set paw on the territory of that evil clan, he declared. Yellow Fang sighed. The journey would be even longer if they couldn't go through Wind Clan, but she made no protest, just led the way farther up the Thunderpath until the moorland fell away behind them. They crossed beside a small cluster of two-legged ends. 
Yellow Fang worked her claws impatiently into the grass as she waited for a chance to race over the hard black surface between the snarling monsters. Their route took them across frost-bitten fields where the grass was hard and cold under their paws. A bitter, icy wind blew into their faces. Broken Tail plodded with his head down, the freezing gusts plastering his fur to his sides. Darkness had fallen by the time they reached Mothermouth. Yellow Fang led Broken Tail down the long tunnel and into the cave, where dazzling light was already pouring from the moonstone. As she waved her tail to beckon Broken Tail closer and showed him where to lie with his nose against the stone, she winced at the memory of her previous dream. Please, Darkland, spare me from that. But no shrieking, blood-stained kits met Yellow Fang's gaze as she woke within her dream. Instead, she was standing on a bleak and windy stretch of marsh that might have been somewhere within ShadowClan territory. Looking around for Broken Tail, Yellow Fang saw that the quiet, grief-stricken cat of their journey had vanished. Now the tabby Tom stood strong and erect, his kinked tail held high like a signal. His eyes shone and he quivered with excitement. Where are they? he demanded. My Star Clan ancestors! Yellow Fang glimpsed movement in the distance and pointed with her tail to where a line of cats was advancing steadily over the marshes. A frosty glimmer came from their pelts, and the light of stars was in their eyes. Cedar Star was in the lead, with his deputy Stone Tooth patting at his shoulder. Sage Whisker and Lizard Fang were there too, and other cats Yellow Fang didn't know, though she recognized some of them as cats who had given lives to Ragged Star when he became clan leader. At first Yellow Fang could only count eight cats, until she noticed that one of them was a tiny kit, skipping through the long grass in Cedar Star's paw steps. My daughter, oh my daughter, she whispered. She felt a moment surprised to see that Ragged Star was not among the nine. Surely he would want to give a life to his son. Then she told herself that Ragged Star's spirit must still be traveling to Star Clan. He will watch over Broken Tail as he leads his clan. Cedar Star was the first of the nine cats to step forward. He bowed his head to Broken Tail and meowed. I give you a life to live by the warrior code. Remember it well, Broken Tail, and let it be your guide. Wiser cats than you or I have lost their way without it. Yellow Fang detected a veiled warning in his words, though Broken Tail showed no loss of confidence as he touched noses with Cedar Star to receive the life. Yellow Fang knew what agony the leader had to endure with each new life. But Broken Tail gave little hint of the pain beyond a flaring of his nostrils and a twitch of his eyes. Cedar Star stepped back into the circle of nine cats that had formed around Broken Tail, and Stone Tooth took his place. I give you a life for duty, he meowed. Remember what you owe to your clan as well as what your clan owes to you. He touched noses with Broken Tail, who flexed his claws briefly and then was still. The next Star Clan warrior to step forward was Dawn Star, the former Shadow Clan leader who had given a life to Ragged Star. I give you a life for honor, she told Broken Tail. Honor is expected from all cats, but most of all from a clan leader. Use the honor of leadership carefully. For the first time, Broken Tail showed emotion as he received his third life. His eyes closed as if he was in pain, and his claws dug hard into the earth. As the Star Clan she cat withdrew, Broken Tail opened his eyes again and fixed her with a challenging gaze, as if he blamed her for the torture of receiving her life. But Dawn Star did not react as she took her place once more in the circle. The fourth cat stepped forward. Yellow Fang didn't know his name. He was a skinny gray tom, and he studied Broken Tail carefully before he spoke. I give you a life for truth. Without it, kin is set against kin, clan against clan. Hold fast to truth in all your dealings, and let it guide your words. The skinny tom hesitated before darting his head forward like a striking snake and touching Broken Tail's nose to give him his life. As Yellow Fang looked on from outside the circle of cats, she began to feel uneasy. All the lives Broken Tail had received so far seemed to come with a warning, almost a threat, 
and she sensed a reluctance among the Star Clan cats that was unlike anything she had experienced when she had accompanied Ragged Star to his ceremony. Then she dismissed these thoughts with a lash of her tail. Broken Tail was the clan deputy, so he has to be the new leader. Even Star Clan can't change that. And why would they want to? Broken Tail is a strong and loyal cat. When he has more experience, he will be a great leader. Lizard Fang was the next warrior to come forward. Yellow Fang rejoiced to see his frail limbs strong again and his tabby pelt thick and healthy. I give you a life for judgment, he meowed. Shadow Clan stands at a place where the path ahead divides. Choose to follow the right path for the good of your clan. As Broken Tail received his fifth life, instead of appearing unmoved, his limbs and his tail twitched as if they were briefly out of his control. He staggered at the touch of Lizard Fang's nose, recovering himself with an effort. Something huge, something overwhelming seemed to hover around him, as if an unseen battle were going on in the very air he breathed. Can he stand to receive four more lives? Yellow Fang wondered. Then she saw the next cat in line and bit back a cry of pain. Oh, my precious love, I miss you with every beat of my heart. Tail held high. Broken Tail's tiny sister pattered forward into the circle to stand beside him. I give you a life for love of kin, she mewed. The wisdom in her voice startling Yellow Fang as it came from so small a body. And as clan leader, remember that every clan cat is your kin. Broken Tail had to bend his head to receive the life from the young kit. As their noses touched, a spasm of agony shook him. And he closed his eyes, jerking his head aside as if for a heartbeat he had seen something he could not bear. The seventh cat was a stranger to Yellow Fang, a small brown tabby with a depth of gentleness in her eyes. I give you a life for clear sight, she meowed. Broken tail, know yourself and your destiny. But know too that destiny can be changed if you choose the right path. Again, broken tail staggered as he received the new life. Yellow Fang thought he looked exhausted. Yet throughout, he hadn't uttered the slightest sound of pain, not even a whimper. The eighth cat. A plump, black-and-white tom had also given a life to Ragged Star. He padded up to Broken Tail and spoke swiftly. I give you a life for strength. This is the time you and your clan will stand or fall. You need to be stronger than ever. What do they mean? Yellowfang wondered. So many of the cats had spoken of a divided path for Shadow Clan, a time when decisions must be made about the destiny of all the cats. What are Broken Tail's choices? And will he make the right ones? This time, when Broken Tail received the life, he seemed to revive, as if the strength the Tom had promised was already flowing into his limbs and his heart. With the end of the ceremony in sight, Yellow Fang began to breathe more easily. All this while, Sage Whisker had stood silently in the circle of cats, her gaze fixed on Broken Tail. Now she stepped forward to give him his last life. Broken Tail. I give you a life for compassion. Use it to shelter the weakest in your clan, the kits, the elders, and the sick. Use it to show mercy to your enemies and to choose the path your paw steps will follow. Yellowfang watched the spasm of pain rippling through Broken Tail as Sage Whisker gave him his ninth life. For a moment she was afraid that he wouldn't be able to stay on his paws. But the discomfort passed. As the nine cats acclaimed him by his new name, Broken Star stood strong and proud again, his eyes gleaming as he heard the yowls rise up to the stars. Broken Star! Broken Star! As the yowling died away, he dipped his head. My ancestors, I thank you, he meowed solemnly. I promise that I will make Shadow Clan the strongest and most feared that it has ever been. The Star Clan warriors began to fade, their outlines shimmering faintly with starlight until they vanished, 
leaving Yellow Fang and Broken Star alone in the bleak marshes. Broken Star turned to Yellow Fang. It is time to return, he announced. His voice dropped to a savage snarl, and he lashed his tail. It is time for vengeance. Dusk was falling by the time Yellow Fang and Broken Star returned to camp. Broken Star raced across to the clan rock and summoned the clan together. Let all cats join here beneath the clan rock for a meeting. Yellow Fang was surprised that he had left out the words old enough to catch their own prey, but guessed that he had forgotten. He's new to this. He'll get the words right when he's had more practice. Newt Speck emerged from the nursery with Little Kit, Wet Kit, and Brown Kit scampering around her feet. Featherstorm followed, but there was no sign of Moss Kit, Vol Kit, or Dong Kit. Broken Star gazed down at Featherstorm with a disapproving expression. Where are your kits? Fetch them at once. But they've just gone to sleep, Featherstorm protested. And it's very cold out here. Besides, they're not old enough to catch their own prey, and usually... Broken Star cut her off. Are they part of Shadow Clan? He growled. Then get them. So he does want the kids here, Yellowfang thought. Why? Featherstorm hesitated, anger clear in her eyes, but she could not hold Broken Star's gaze. She retreated into the nursery and reappeared a few heartbeats later, guiding her kits in front of her. All three stumbled sleepily into the open and collapsed into a bundle of fur close to their mother. Broken Star gave Featherstorm a curt nod. I will not rest until Wind Clan has been punished, and until Shadow Clan is feared by every cat in the forest, he announced to his clan. His voice rose to a roar. They will bow down before us. From now on, warriors will only fight and train for battle. Hunting is of little importance, and cats will have to find food where they can. He paused, but the clan was silent. Yellowfang thought that shock and perhaps a little fear had closed their jaws as they exchanged uncertain glances. Meanwhile, Broken Star went on, it is time for me to choose a deputy. I say these words before the spirits of my ancestors that they may hear and approve my choice. Blackfoot will be the next deputy of Shadow Clan. The big white warrior rose from his pace and walked to the clan rock. His black paw looked like a shadow in the moonlight, and his eyes shone with pride. Broken Star, your choice honors me, he meowed. I'll do my best to serve you and our clan well. Yellow Fang felt the clan relax around her. Blackfoot was popular. He hasn't had an apprentice, but then we haven't had any kits ready to give him. Now, Broken Star went on, I need an apprentice. Moss Kit, step forward. Wait, Yellow Fang broke in. He's not old enough. Quiet, Broken Star's voice cut across mutters of agreement from other cats. I am the leader and this is my decision. Featherstorm, clearly reluctant, prodded Moss Kit awake. He was a big, healthy kit, but even so, Yellow Fang knew he wasn't ready to be an apprentice. He stepped forward, glancing around him uncertainly. From this time on, Broken Star announced. You will be known as Moss Paul. I will be your mentor. He jumped down from the clan rock to touch noses with the little cat, who looked startled. That's not fair, Volkit complained, gazing at his brother with undisguised envy. That's right, Don Kit agreed. We're just as old as he is. I promise you will be made apprentices as soon as you're as tall as your brother, Broken Star mewed. Blackfoot will be your mentor, Don Kit, and Clawface can have Volkit. At once, Volkit arched his back and stood on his toes, as if he was trying to grow taller right away. Stop that, Featherstorm snapped. Your brother is too young to be an apprentice, and so are you. But it's a great honor, Blackfoot assured her. You should be proud. Newt Speck said nothing, just drew her kits closer to her with her tail. Though some of the cats were still looking worried, Yellow Fang could see that most of them thought it was a good idea. We don't have any apprentices just now. Wolfstep commented, and we need to start training young cats. Flintfang nodded. Mosspaw is big and strong. He'll be fine. Running Nose padded up to Yellowfang and spoke into her ear. 
I guess we'd better stock up on marigolds for scratches. His voice sounded concerned, but resigned. You're looking troubled, but don't be, he went on. Everything will be fine, you'll see. He paused, then added, Wind Clan is going to regret killing Ragged Star, that's for sure. Chapter 37 Fernshade lay stretched out on the floor of the nursery. A powerful ripple passed along her swollen belly, and she bit down hard on the stick Running Nose had brought to stifle her shriek of agony. Yellowfang blocked the she-cat's pain so that she could concentrate and ran her paw over Fernshade's belly. She could only feel one kit inside, but it was a big one, and it was stubbornly refusing to be born. A lively ball of fur bounced against Yellowfang's shoulder. Is the kit here yet? Volkit squeaked. I want to see. Yellowfang bit back a sharp retort. It was difficult enough delivering this stubborn kit without the other five and their mothers watching her every move. This nursery is so full I can hardly move a whisker. All of you kits, out of here, she hissed. Go over to the apprentice's den and play with Mosspaw. Oh, we want to say hi to the new kit. Don Kit protested, disappointed. And you can, Running Nose promised from his place beside Fernshade's head. Just not yet. I'll call you when it's time. There was a brief moment of squealing as the five kits bundled out of the den. I'll go keep an eye on them, Featherstorm muttered. When she and the kits had gone, Yellowfang had room to breathe. She watched another spasm of pain pass through Fernshade. You're doing very well, she praised her. It won't be long now. Her gaze met running noses, and she saw her own worry reflected in his eyes. Fernshade was exhausted, and there was no sign that the kit inside her was making any progress. Feel here, Yellowfang murmured to Running Nose, placing her paw on Fernshade's belly. I think her kit is the wrong way around. Running Nose reached out his front paw, then nodded. You're right. What do we do now? Massage her belly just there, Yellowfang instructed. And I'll give the kit a push like this. For a moment, nothing happened, except that Fernshade bit down on her stick again, her eyes dull and glazed with pain. Then the kit gave a great heave inside her. The stick splintered in Fernshade's jaws, and a small black and white shape slid out of her onto the soft moss. Yes! Yellowfang gave an exultant yowl. Well done, Fernshade! It's a fine, handsome Tom, Running Nose announced. The exhausted queen curled around her son, her eyes full of love, as she began to lick his fur and guide him toward her belly so he could suckle. His face is striped just like a badger, Yellowfang observed. Then that's his name, Fernshade murmured. Badger Kit. Worn out, but full of joy at the successful birth, Yellowfang rose to her paws and climbed out of the nursery. Outside, Wolfstep was pacing back and forth. He whipped around as soon as Yellowfang emerged. Well, he demanded. You have a son, Yellowfang told him seeing the light spring up in Wolf Step's eyes. You can go in, but be careful. Fernshade is very weak. She followed Wolf Step back in, noting with approval how gentle he was as he settled down beside his mate and licked her ear. Isn't he beautiful? Fernshade whispered, pressing her muzzle against Wolf Step's shoulder. His name is Badger Kit. He's the most beautiful kit in the forest. Wolfstep responded, looking down at his son with love and pride in his eyes. And that's a really good name. Watching them, Yellowfang felt a warm thrill of satisfaction. This is the best part of being a medicine cat, she told Running Nose. Breathing new life into the clan. And we haven't seen enough of it lately. Since Broken Star had become leader, the clan had seemed to be a dark place. Yellow Fang felt as though she spent all her time now treating wounds and overseeing burials. Stone Tooth had died peacefully in his sleep. Yellow Fang was glad that he hadn't had to witness the battles Broken Star had led his warriors into. Vengeance had been taken on Wind Clan more times than Yellow Fang could count, with stolen rabbits regularly appearing on the Shadow Clan fresh kill pile, 
A hint of thunderclans sent on the wrong side of the border near four trees had led Broken Star to extend patrols beyond the thunderpath until warriors returned with tufts of thunderclan fur caught in their claws and the scent of their rivals' blood on their pelts. It seemed as if Shadow Clan was at war with every cat, and amid all this turmoil, the birth of new kits felt even more precious. Leaving the new family together, Yellow Fang slipped out of the nursery to see light growing in the sky, the trees outlined against a bright morning. Yellow Fang took in a deep breath and arched her back in a long stretch. You're exhausted, Running Nose commented, emerging from the nursery behind her. Why don't you go back to the den and sleep? I'll fetch some wet moss for fern shade. Yellow Fang opened her jaws to protest, then realized that she was so tired she could scarcely hold her head up. Okay, thanks, she mumbled, and headed for her nest. She hardly seemed to have slept for a heartbeat when she was awoken by a small nose prodding her in her side. Excuse me, Yellow Fang, a voice squeaked. I'm hurting. Yellow Fang opened her eyes to see Brown Kit standing in front of her, holding up one paw. Is it a thorn? She yawned as she scrambled out of her nest. Let me look. But however carefully Yellow Fang searched, she couldn't find a thorn in the tiny paw. Letting down her defenses, she tracked Brown Kit's pain and realized that it came from his shoulder. Somehow he had wrenched it. How did this happen? she asked him. What have you been up to? Broken Star let all the kits go with Moss Paw to the training area to give Fern Shade some peace and quiet, Brown Kit explained. His eyes glowed at the memory. It was great. We learned some battle moves. Watch this. Ouch. He broke off with a gasp of pain as he tried to swipe with his injured leg. You're too young to leave the camp, let alone start training. Yellow Fang growled as she went to look for some daisy leaves to treat the sprain. Am not, Brown Kid squeaked. I'm nearly three moons old, like Moss Paul when he became Broken Star's apprentice. You should see him fighting now. He's awesome. I'm sure he is, but no more training for you, Yellow Fang warned him. You're not the leader of the clan, Brown Kid retorted. Broken Star is, and if he says I can train, then I will. Yellow Fang didn't speak just prepared the poultice for brown kit, plastering it on securely with cobweb. Now go rest in the nursery, she told him, and see me again tomorrow. As the kit left, he passed Running Nose in the entrance to the den. Fernshade and Badger Kit are doing well, he told Yellow Fang. She seems to have plenty of milk, thanks to our clan. Yellow Fang acknowledged his news with a nod. I'm going to speak to Broken Star, she meowed. Apparently, he took the kit's training this morning. Running Nose blinked. That's not necessarily a bad thing, he pointed out. It's good for them to get some exercise away from the nursery, especially when Fernshade needs to rest. Not if they get injured, Yellowfang retorted. She headed into the clearing, aiming for the leader's den among the oak roots. But before she reached it, Broken Star appeared and leaped up onto the clan rock, yowling a summons. Shadow Clan warriors began pushing their way out of their den to gather around the rock. Blackfoot sat at the base, his ears pricked. Flint Fang and Tanglebur came to join him. Glancing around at her clanmates, Yellow Fang thought how hungry and skinny they all looked, and nearly every warrior bore a new scar from one border skirmish or another. Rowanberry and Nutwhisker bounded over to Yellow Fang. What's this all about? Nutwhisker mewed. Yellow Fang shrugged. I have no idea. The elders emerged at the entrance to their den, and all the kits, even Brown Kit, hobbling bravely on three paws, scrambled out of the nursery and clustered together at the front of the crowd. Their whiskers quivered with anticipation. Yellow Fang guessed that they were all hoping to be made apprentices. Where is Fernshade? Broken Star demanded. Running Nose, who was sitting beside Yellow Fang, rose to his paws and dipped his head politely to his clan leader. She's asleep, Broken Star, he meowed. We shouldn't wake her. Broken Star hesitated, then gave a reluctant nod. Cats of Shadow Clan, he began. You have fought well in our recent battles. 
Our clan has scored victories in Thunder Clan and Wind Clan, and even defeated some kitty pets foolish enough to stray into the forest from Two Leg Place. But I think the clan can still be stronger, he went on, his eyes gleaming. Blackfoot sprang up from his place at the foot of the clan rock. What about battle training every day? he suggested. That would really sharpen our skills. And how do you suppose we're going to fill our bellies, Mouse Brain? Yellowfang thought. We could patrol at sun high as well as dawn and evening, Russifer suggested. Let Thunder Clan and Wind Clan know that we're always watching. We could even put a permanent patrol across the Thunderpath, Deerfoot added. Yellowfang exchanged a glance with Running Nose and saw her own doubts reflected in his eyes. We don't have enough time or cats to do all this. Broken Star looked at all the cats gathered around the clan rock, and his gaze rested longest on the elders. Even our elders have a role to play, Broken Star announced, his gaze still firmly fixed on the old cats, who were beginning to look uneasy. Great Star Clan, Yellowfang thought. He's not going to ask them to train young cats, is he? Or hunt? That's not fair. Broken Star drew one paw over the rock. I know they would do anything to make us stronger and more powerful. And with that in mind, I have decided that they can best help their clan by leaving the camp. A stunned silence followed. Then yowls of protest rose up from all over the clearing. You can't do that, Rowanberry called out. It's against the warrior code. Yes, they've earned their place with us, Wolfstep declared. For a moment, Yellowfang refused to believe what she was hearing. The elders were just as shocked, turning to one another with looks of indignation and growing fear. The elders are no use for fighting or hunting or having kits, Broken Star explained, dismissing the cat's protests with a wave of his tail. So they can't take up precious room or prey. They must go. To Yellowfang's horror, she saw that some of the warriors were beginning to convince themselves that Broken Star was right. They might be more comfortable away from the camp, Deerfoot commented. Cinderfur nodded. True, especially with so many kits scampering around. You know how the little ones are always bothering the elders. Yellowfang didn't want to hear any more. She padded over to where the elders were clustered together in front of their den. Pool Cloud's shoulder fur was bristling, and she lashed her tail. Broken Star can't do this to us, she snarled. Has he forgotten how well we've served our clan? Archie nodded. He was working his claws into the ground, rage flaring in his eyes. If he remembers, he obviously doesn't care, he spat. What would he do if we refused to go? I don't think we want to find out, Nightbelt warned, resting his tail on the older cat's shoulder. He could make us fight, prove that we can still be warriors by invading the other clans. Do you want to be a part of that? In a lower voice, he added, we all know that these battles aren't necessary. Hollyflower sighed. Let's just go, she growled. This isn't the Shadow Clan I knew. Not anymore. She brushed her tail along Crowtail's side. Come on, let's collect our bedding. Nightpelt gazed up to where Broken Star still stood on the clan rock. We will go, Broken Star. Good, the clan leader meowed. Move out at once, and good luck with your hunting. As the elders filed back into their den, more murmurs of protest followed them, but no cat dared to speak out loud. Yellow Fang halted Nightpelt with a paw on his shoulder. This is wrong, and you know it, she hissed. Nightpelt looked at her with troubled eyes. I know, he murmured, but Broken Star is our leader. Star Clan gave him nine lives. They have done nothing to stop him so far. This must be their will as well as his. Yellowfang couldn't think of an argument against that. No, this can't be the will of Star Clan. Inwardly seething, she slipped into the elder's den and helped them to gather up their favorite soft bits of bedding. Running Nose followed her and rolled up the moss and fern into bundles for carrying. When everything was ready, Yellow Fang led the way back into the clearing. Refusing to look at Broken Star, she headed for the entrance, hotly aware that the gaze of all the rest of the clan was fixed on her and the elders. 
The group of cats trekked out of the camp in silence and padded across the marsh. Yellow Fang took them to a spindly copse of trees that offered some shelter. It was still within Shadow Clan territory and not too far from the camp. There she found a spot where rock had fallen away to make a hollow in a bank, shaded by overarching clumps of fern. Yellow Fang and Running Nose cleared away the debris inside and dug out more soil to enlarge the space until it was big enough for all the elders. Night Pelt tried to help, but the vigorous exercise brought on a fit of coughing. Let us finish this, Yellow Fang told him. You scout around to see if you can find any prey. When the den was ready, the elders brought in their bedding and began arranging it into nests. This is okay, Crowtail mewed, sounding determined. We'll be fine here, Yellow Fang. Yellow Fang wondered if the black tabby she-cat was trying to convince herself as well as her den mates. I'll visit every day with herbs and whatever prey I can catch, she promised. Don't neglect your duties, Pool Cloud sneered, or Broken Star might banish you as well. You haven't been banished, Yellow Fang protested. You're still part of Shadow Clan. You still live in our territory. Night Pelt trotted up with a mouse dangling from his jaws, in time to hear her last words. It feels like banishment, he commented quietly. Yellow Fang left Running Nose to finish settling in the elders and marched off to find Broken Star. Shrill squealing from the training area alerted her as she approached the camp, and she turned her paw steps toward the sound. When she reached the edge of the clearing, she saw all five kits and moss paw stalking one another, leaping and swiping as they practiced battle moves. Broken Star sat on an ivy-covered tree stump, watching them with a gleam of satisfaction in his eyes. Yellow Fang strode over to Broken Star. I have to speak with you, she meowed. Broken Star stared down at her. Go on then, speak. Yellow Fang took a deep breath. What are you doing? She demanded. Training kits who are too young to fight? Sending the elders away from their den? This isn't part of the warrior code. Broken Star narrowed his eyes. Nor is questioning your clan leader, he hissed. You are my medicine cat, so you do as I say. Are the elders safe? Sheltered? Yes, Yellow Fang answered reluctantly. But then they are fine. Broken Star interrupted. And if the kits want to learn how to fight, why should I stop them? We have many enemies, Yellow Fang. You have made us many enemies, you mean, Yellow Fang thought. Broken Star had turned away from her and was shouting instructions to the cats in the clearing. No, little kit, use your hind paws. Brown kit, wet kit, try the double attack again on Moss Paw. Remember to strike him at exactly the same time. Yellow Fang knew that there was no point in trying to argue with Broken Star any further. Turning to leave, she halted at the sound of a squeal from the far side of the clearing. She spun around to see Brown Kit and Wet Kit backing away from Moss Paw. The tiny apprentice was lying ominously still. We were trying that double attack trick like you said, Brown Kit squeaked. Did we do it right? A horrible suspicion rose to choke Yellow Fang as she bounded over to Moss Paw. His head was wrenched at an awkward angle, and his eyes were open, but glazed. Great Star Clan, he's dead. Striving to keep calm, Yellow Fang stepped between the kits and Moss Paw's body. Go straight back to the camp, she ordered them. Go on, all of you. The five kits gave one another bewildered looks, then scampered obediently away. I guess Moss Paw must be hurt real bad, Volkit exclaimed as they left. Broken Star strode across and confronted Yellow Fang. What's going on? Why have you stopped the training? Yellow Fang was so horrified it was hard for her to keep all her paws on the ground and not leap at her clan leader, clawing at his eyes. Look what happened, she yowled. Broken Star gazed down at the tiny limp body. I should have taught them better, he mewed. They must have got the angle wrong. That's not the point, Yellow Fang snarled. An apprentice is dead. Broken Star bowed his head. You're right. It's terrible. There was genuine regret in his voice. The clan needs apprentices more than ever. 
her heart wailing with grief, Yellow Fang picked up Moss Paw's body by his scruff and carried him back to the camp. He wasn't even four moons old. In their den, Running Nose looked startled and shocked as Yellow Fang laid Moss Paw's body down and began to smooth his ruffled fur. What in the name of Star Clan? he began. Yellow Fang cut off his question. Get Feather Storm, she ordered. Running Nose hurried off at once and returned a few heartbeats later with Moss Paw's mother. For a moment, Feather Storm stood rigid, staring at the lifeless body of her son. I'm so sorry, Yellow Fang mewed. Feather Storm seemed not to have heard her. She flung her head back and let out an anguished shriek. No! No! I'll get her some time leaves for the shock, Running Nose murmured, slipping past Yellow Fang. Feather Storm turned to Yellow Fang, her eyes full of grief and confusion. He was only training, she meowed, her voice shaking. How could this have happened? Yellow Fang was determined that the kits shouldn't be blamed for killing a clanmate. It was a terrible accident, she replied. As Featherstorm crouched beside her son, pushing her nose into his fur, Yellow Fang heard Broken Star's voice raised in a summons to the clan. What now? she growled as she headed out into the clearing. Broken Star stood once more upon the clan rock. The rest of the clan was gathering, and Yellow Fang couldn't help glancing toward the elders then, waiting for them to emerge. It feels so strange that they aren't here. I have some very sad news, Broken Star announced. Moss Paw is dead. Brown Kit and Wet Kit let out a shriek, while murmurs of shock and disbelief rose from the rest of the clan. It was just an accident, Broken Star went on. You kits were all very brave. To reward you, I'm going to make you all apprentices. The kit's shock changed to squeals of excitement. Yellow Fang closed her eyes. Has Broken Star learned nothing? Volpaw, you will be my apprentice, Broken Star mewed briskly, not bothering to speak the usual words of the apprentice ceremony. Clawface, I know I promised him to you, but you can have Little Paw instead. I owe it to Moss Paw to train his brother in his place. Blackfoot, you take Dawn Paw. Boulder, you will have Wet Paw, and Stumpy Tail will have Brown Paw. The crowd of cats shifted as four of the kids scampered up to their new mentors to touch noses with them. Only Volpaw remained at the foot of the clan rock, gazing up at Broken Star with shining eyes. I am proud of my clan, Broken Star declared. We have five new apprentices. Victory will be ours in every battle. Glancing around, he asked, Where is Featherstorm? In my den, Yellowfang replied. Fetch her. Before Yellowfang could move, Featherstorm emerged from the medicine cat's den. Her head was bowed and her tail trailed in the dust. Shadow Clan owes you a great debt for mothering so many warriors, Broken Star told her. I think it would be best if you join the elders now, where you can rest and be proud. For a heartbeat, Featherstorm did not move. Her eyes puzzled as she gazed at Broken Star. Yellow Fang wondered if she expected the clan leader to acknowledge that they were kin, that she was his father's mother. Then she nodded without saying a word. Yellow Fang stared after her in dismay as she stumbled across the clearing and vanished into the brambles. There's another cat gone, Rowanberry murmured worriedly to Clawface. What is Broken Star thinking? Star Clan knows, her mate responded with a twitch of his whiskers. If he's not careful, there'll be more of us out there than in camp. Just watch what you say, Tanglebur hissed beside him. Don't go asking for trouble. Broken Star hears everything. The crowd of cats began to break up and the new mentors led their apprentices out for the tour of the borders. The little cats weren't as excited as new apprentices usually were because they had already left the camp to practice their battle moves, but they might be more impressed when they realized how far Shadow Clan stretched. As Yellow Fang watched them go, she realized that Bright Flower had padded up to her side. The she-cat looked excited but apprehensive, her whiskers quivering. Brackenfoot and I are expecting kits, she announced. 
Yellow Fang wished she could be as thrilled as usual at the prospect of new kits for the clan. But this time all she could do was stare at her mother as a wave of despair washed over her. May Star Clan help you all, she whispered. Chapter 38 Broken Star stood on top of the great rock with the bare branches of the oaks at four trees creaking over his head. A cold wind drove shreds of cloud across the sky where the full moon shone fitfully. Blackfoot sat at the foot of the rock with russet fur, stumpy tail, brown paw, and brackenfoot huddled together close by. Brightflower hadn't come to the gathering this time because her kits were almost ready to be born. Yellow Fang sat with the other medicine cats, though she no longer felt at ease among them. Had Star Clan told them in their dreams what was going on in Shadow Clan? Her own dreams of Star Clan were limited to visions of blood and death, of battles between cats too young to open their eyes. If these were omens, Shadow Clan was doomed, and it seemed that she could do nothing to help. Yellow Fang listened apprehensively as her clan leader began his report. Shadow Clan is stronger than ever, Broken Star announced with triumph in his eyes. We have been challenged on each border, but have won in every battle. His gaze raked across the cats in the clearing below. Let all clans know that we will tolerate no trespassing, no prey-stealing, no dishonor. He narrowed his eyes, as if he was defying any of the cats to comment. And we have a new apprentice. Badgerpaw, he finished. Yellow Fang watched Badgerpaw rise to his paws beside his mentor, Flint Fang. The black and white Tom held his head high, but he still looked tiny. He's barely three moons old. Badgerpaw! Badgerpaw! The other Shadow Clan apprentices cheered loudly beside their clanmate, though Yellow Fang couldn't help thinking about how small they looked beside the apprentices from the other clans. Her belly clenched with the memory of grief. One Shadow Clan apprentice was missing since the last gathering. Volpaw had died of an infected wound from a fight with rats. Broken Star makes a rat fight part of every apprentice's training now. Is he mad? As the cheers for Badgerpaw died away, Barkface leaned over and whispered into Yellowfang's ear, Tell me that apprentice is old enough to start training. His voice was taut, and there was disapproval in his gaze. Spotted Leaf, the new ThunderClan medicine cat, opened her eyes wide with anxiety. No cat would train kits younger than six moons, would they? Star Clan wouldn't allow that, surely, Barkface added. It would be completely against the warrior code, Mudfer declared. There was weight in the tone of all the medicine cats, suggesting that Yellowfang should do something to stop the training of kits. How can I admit that I'm powerless when it comes to influencing Broken Star? she thought with an irritable flick of her ears. Broken Star knows what he's doing, she mewed aloud, turning her back on the other medicine cat. It's none of your business. She could hear them muttering about what a dreadful temper she had, but she ignored them. There's no way I can defend Broken Star, so it's better that I don't speak to them at all. Yellow Fang had given up hoping that her clanmates would stand up to their leader. Broken Star had convinced them that every living creature was their enemy and his cats would do anything, even surrender their own kits to keep their clan safe. And the elders, whose wisdom had once been so important in guiding the clan, were still exiled in the marshes. He has complete power now. Great star clan, is there nothing any cat can do? At the end of the gathering, Broken Star swept away from four trees at the head of his clan, Badgerpaw was pattering along beside him, his eyes still full of excitement at seeing the other clans for the first time. Walking behind them, Yellow Fang was able to overhear their conversation. You'll be able to fight in your first real battle soon, Broken Star promised the apprentice. You've been training for half a moon, so you're ready. Really? Badgerpaw gasped. Broken Star nodded. I've scented traces of Wind Clan on our territory, so we will attack at dawn. Those rabbit eaters will soon discover they can't set paw in Shadow Clan territory and get away with it. Ready to burst with excitement and pride, Badgerpaw darted off to his mentor, Flintfang. I'm going to fight, 
he announced, dancing along beside the powerful gray Tom. Broken Star said, I'll use that two-pawed move you taught me and the leap and scratch. Flint Fang gazed down at him. Just remember everything I've taught you and that there's no shame in losing your first battle. His tone was heavy, and Yellow Fang wondered just how keen he was to lead his tiny apprentice into a hostile clan. Fernshade, who was walking beside Yellow Fang, looked fondly across at Badger Paw. I'm so proud of him, she exclaimed. I thought I'd never managed to give birth to him, and he's everything to me, and now he's going to be a true Shadow Clan warrior. Yellow Fang drew a breath to speak, but bit back the words. He shouldn't even be an apprentice yet. Yellow Fang crouched in the prickly grass, listening to the sounds of the skirmish with Wind Clan that came from the far side of the Thunderpath. The sun shone brightly over her head, and branches in the fresh green of new leaf rustled at the edge of the forest. This is not a day when cats should die. Paul steps sounded behind Yellow Fang, and she turned her head to see Night Pelt approaching with the limp body of a vole in his jaws. In spite of the elder's exile, the young black cat looked settled and confident. Yellow Fang knew he had found a purpose in life, doing most of the hunting for his companions, keeping up their spirits when they were far from the camp where they had expected to live out their days. Night Pelt set down his prey and sat beside Yellow Fang, his ears pricked as he listened to the screeches and thuds from the battle. How long will this continue, do you think? he murmured. Until every cat is dead. Yellowfang replied bitterly. Either here or in Wind Clan. Why does Star Clan let Broken Star do it? Nightpelt asked. Perhaps they are proud of him, Yellowfang responded. I have begged Star Clan for reasons, but they ignore me. They have abandoned us to wherever Broken Star leads. After all, she went on out loud. Shadow Clan is the strongest and most feared of all the clans now. Night Pelt shook his head. I cannot believe our ancestors would find any glory in this constant bloodshed. With a deep sigh, he picked up his prey and headed for the elder's den in the copse. Yellow Fang felt a pang of guilt. Every night her dreams were full of blood and darkness, demonstrating over and over that what Broken Star was doing was absolutely wrong. But there was no guidance from Star Clan, not even an appearance from Silver Flame to promise that all would be well in the end. Whatever Yellow Fang did, it was up to her alone. I have to stop him, she thought. I am his medicine cat. He must listen to me. Just then, Russet Fur came panting up. Yellow Fang, she gasped. Running Nose sent me to find you. Bright Flower's kits are coming. Yellow Fang sprang to her paws and raced back to the camp. But when she reached the nursery, she found Bright Flower already curled around two furry little scraps, while Running Nose looked on with satisfaction. Oh, they're beautiful, Yellow Fang exclaimed, with a nod of approval for Running Nose. Have you named them yet? Bright Flower looked up from licking a tiny tortoiseshell she cat. This is Marigold Kit, she purred, and the little gray Tom is Mint Kit. Kits, this is Yellow Fang. She's your big sister. Both kits looked strong and healthy, suckling at Bright Flower's belly with their eyes tightly shut and their soft paws kneading rhythmically. A stab of pain struck Yellow Fang as she pictured her own daughters, who had gone to Star Clan before they had a chance at life. She bent her head and touched each tiny head gently with her nose. Hello, kits, she murmured. Welcome to Shadow Clan. You would have been a great mother, Bright Flower whispered. Yellow Fang tensed. Never, she hissed. This is my life now. Then she saw Marigold Kit pummeling at her mother with tiny paws, and love and longing swept over her again. They're perfect, she breathed. The noise of cats returning to the camp intruded on the blissful silence inside the nursery. Yellow Fang raised her head. Is that news of the battle? She scrambled out of the nursery to see Flint Fang emerging from the entrance with a crooked black and white shape dangling from his jaws. Oh no, Yellow Fang yowled. Badger Paw! She raced across to Flint Fang, meeting him in the center of the clearing. 
The gray Tom laid his burden down and smoothed the fur on his apprentice's head with one paw. The warrior's eyes were glazed as if he still saw the blood and terror of the battle. He fought like a lion, Flint Fang meowed hoarsely, turning his shocked gaze on Yellow Fang. He should not have died, because he should not have been fighting. I will never train kits again. It's wrong, and it brings shame to our clan. Yellow Fang crouched down beside Badger Paul's puny body, licking him to clean away the blood and filth of battle. You will go to Star Clan, Badger Paul, she murmured between the strong strokes of her tongue. You will shine so brightly, I promise you. He's not Badger Paul anymore, Flint Fang gently corrected her. I gave him his warrior name before he died. I hope that's okay. He's called Badger Fang now. A surge of compassion swelled up in Yellow Fang for this bewildered, grieving warrior. It's a great name, she told him, and he earned it. You're right. This has to stop. She finished her licking and stood up. I must tell Fernshade what happened. I'll tell her, Flint Fang mewed bravely. I owe her that much and I can assure her that her son died like a true warrior. As Flint Fang walked toward the warrior's den, there was more noise from the entrance. Broken Star bounded through the thorns with the rest of his patrol. Every cat was buoyant with pride, tails fluffed up and their eyes shining. We will feast tonight, Broken Star announced, calling to the apprentices. Off you go he ordered when they stood in front of him. Bring back fresh kill. We must celebrate. Shadow Clan is victorious again. As the apprentices dashed off, Yellow Fang marched up to Broken Star. I have news for you, she snarled. Broken Star stared at her for a moment, then nodded and led the way to his den. He seemed to fill the space between the oak roots with fur and muscle and gleaming eyes. Badger Fang is dead. Oh, did you know that already? Yellow Fang challenged him. For a second, she thought Broken Star looked shocked, but his confidence returned so quickly that she couldn't be sure. That's a shame, he meowed. He would have made a great warrior. Yellow Fang felt the biting fangs of anger sharper than a fox's jaws. Maybe one day, but he was too young, she snapped. You must stop training kits before they are six moons old. You will destroy our clan before they can become warriors. That is my decision, not yours, Broken Star growled. Then I will walk with Star Clan in my dreams, Yellow Fang threatened him, grief and fury making her paws throb. I will let them know exactly what you're doing, and they will take away your nine lives. Broken Star burst into an incredulous mrow of laughter. Star Clan will do nothing to stop me, old cat, he retorted. I have made their clan glorious. Let them try. You certainly won't stop me, he flicked his tail at her. Now do your duty and heal my warriors before we celebrate. Seething with anger, Yellow Fang left. Across the clearing, she spotted a line of injured cats already waiting outside her den. There are so many battles now. Every cat knows to come straight to my den as soon as they return, she thought. Being wounded is just routine. She bounded across the clearing and slipped between the boulders into her den. Running Nose was binding a poultice of marigold onto Scorch Wind's shoulder. Warmth flickered into Yellow Fang's heart at the sight of her companion. I couldn't hope for a more patient and loyal medicine cat to have beside me. Scorch Wind kept turning his head to talk to Boulder, who was waiting with blood dripping from a torn ear. Did you see me scratch that Wind Clan, Tom? He prompted. I showed that furball who's the strongest. You should have seen me fighting with their deputy, Boulder responded. I think he must be still running. Do they even know that Badger Fang died today? Yellow Fang sighed and went to fetch marigold, goldenrod, and cobweb. Let me look at that ear, she snapped at Boulder. And for Star Clan's sake, keep still. While she was cleaning up the savaged ear, Little Paw crept into the den, holding out one paw that was bleeding where a claw had been torn away. Is it true? He mewed. Is Badger Fang really dead? Yes, 
Yellowfang replied curtly. To her astonishment, Little Paw's eyes shone. Wow, he's a true warrior now. I hope he's watching me from Star Clan. Grief struck Yellowfang like a blow. These tiny cats are far too accepting of death and battle. The warrior code has been trampled in the dust if they have no hope of living long enough to become elders. When the last injured warrior had been treated, Running Nose helped Yellow Fang clean up the leftover herbs. Are you coming to the feast? he asked. Yellow Fang shook her head. I'm not hungry. You go. When Running Nose had left the den, Yellow Fang did her best to ignore the sounds of celebration outside and curled up in her nest. As sleep claimed her, she turned her thoughts toward Star Clan. They cannot hide from me forever. I have to speak with them. Opening her eyes within her dream, Yellow Fang found herself in the windswept marsh where Broken Star had received his nine lives. She paced among the reeds and scrubby bushes until she found Cedar Star, his head lowered as he lapped from a pool. All the pent-up anger of the last moons burst from Yellow Fang at once. Why did you let Broken Star become leader? She shrieked. What were you thinking, you mouse-brained foxes? Cedar Star raised his head and shook droplets of water from his whiskers. His gaze was solemn. What choice did we have? He asked. Broken Star was Ragged Star's deputy. When Ragged Star died, we had to make him leader. That is the way of the warrior code. Well, you made a mistake, Yellow Fang retorted. There are kits here who shouldn't even have been apprentices, let alone fighting in battle. You have to stop him. Cedar Star turned away. There's nothing we can do. Broken Star promised to make Shadow Clan the most feared clan in the forest, and he has kept his promise. What, even feared by Star Clan? Yellow Fang sneered. Frustration and fury and compassion for the innocent dead spilled over inside her. A curse upon you for letting us suffer like this. As she screeched out the words, she awoke with a jolt in her own nest. Star Clan, Cedar Star, the scent of her ancestors had all vanished. Her questions remained unanswered. Star Clan could do nothing to help. Yellow Fang's anger ebbed, leaving behind nothing but emptiness and a strange sense of loss. She had never felt more alone, more abandoned by the ancestors who should have protected her. From now on, I cannot even trust Star Clan. It's the meeting tonight, Running Nose remarked. We should go to the Moonstone. Half a moon had passed since Yellow Fang had dreamed of Cedar Star. Since then, she had had no contact with Star Clan, not even in dreams of violence and blood. She knew that she could not go meet the other medicine cats, press her nose against the moonstone and pretend that nothing had changed. Go without me, she meowed. I have nothing to say to them or to our ancestors. Running Nose's voice was urgent. You cannot give up hope. As long as Broken Star rules this clan, there is no hope, Yellow Fang snarled. Then don't give up on your clanmates, Running Nose pleaded. They need you. I need you. Please, Yellow Fang, you have to keep going. What? Keep on burying kits who should still be at their mother's bellies? Yellow Fang let her fury spill out in a low-voiced snarl. Keep on treating wounds from battles that should not have been fought. Keep on sending the elders to the farthest corner of the territory because their wisdom is valued less than dirt. Running Nose shook his head. I made a vow to serve Shadow Clan he mewed quietly, and that will outlast any leader. Yellow Fang touched Running Nose on the shoulder with her tail. Your loyalty is admirable, she murmured. I chose well when I made you my apprentice. Following her friend into the clearing, Yellow Fang watched him leave for the meeting. Her hatred of Star Clan was a cold, hard knot inside her. Around her, the life of the clan went on. Blackfoot was leading a patrol out, while the apprentices dragged bedding out of the warrior's den. Yet there were no elders sunning themselves at the entrance to their den, and no hunters returning laden with fresh kill. 
Shadow Clan is victorious and feared by all the clans, just as Broken Star promised. But darkness lies at its heart. Excited squeaks from the other side of the clearing jerked Yellow Fang out of her black mood. Her heart lifted as she watched Bright Flower's kits playing outside the nursery. Then she realized that Marigold Kit was pouncing on a ball of moss, shredding it to bits with tiny claws, while Mint Kit was dragging a feather along the ground, worrying at it as if it were a defeated enemy. So young, and already playing at battle? Yellow Fang bounded across the clearing. I know a better game, she announced. See if you can catch my tail. She twitched the tip invitingly in front of Mint Kit. Both kits stopped what they were doing. They looked at Yellow Fang's tail, then at each other, but neither of them moved. If a cat had offered that to me or my litter mates, Yellow Fang thought, their tail would have been shredded by now. Okay, she mewed. What about this? She held her tail out level with the ground. Let's see how high you can jump. Is that part of warrior training? Mint Kit squeaked. Well, not exactly. Yellowfang admitted. In that case, Marigold Kit mewed with a polite dip of her head. We'll keep practicing our battle moves. Thanks. Broken Star said it's important to be as strong as we can before he gives us our mentors. Yellowfang recalled her own early days in the nursery, playing with Nutwhisker and Rowanberry. Attacking the elders' tails was the closest we got to fighting. Yes, we pretended they were Wind Clan invaders. But we knew real battles were moons away. These kids could be fighting to their deaths by the end of Greenleaf. She watched, sick at heart, as Marigold Kit went back to her moss and Mint Kit to his feather. A few moments later, Bright Flower emerged from the nursery and came to stand by Yellowfang's side. They're so strong already, she meowed, though Yellowfang could see a flicker of fear in her eyes. They're certainly lively. Yellowfang commented. They must keep you busy. Her mother nodded. I'll be joining the elders as soon as they leave the nursery, she revealed. It seems so strange not to have them around, she added. Though I'd never say so in front of Broken Star. They should be here, Yellowfang meowed. Bright Flower gave a swift glance around. Don't let our leader hear you say that. Yellowfang twitched her ears. Well, the elders seem happy enough in their new home. It was hard to force out the words when she thought of that tiny hollow in the marshes. Night Pelt hunts for them. And I'll help him when I go to join them, Bright Flower declared. I'm looking forward to the quiet. I'm feeling my age with these kits around. A pulse of shock ran through Yellowfang. Bright Flower, you're not old. Yes, I am, her mother purred gently. And so are you, Yellowfang. None of us survives forever. Yellowfang looked around at her clanmates, from the traces of gray on her mother's muzzle to the kits wrestling with moss and feathers beside her. Suddenly everything seemed as fragile as a moth's wing, as fleeting as a drop of dew. Nothing survives forever. Not even Shadow Clan, with Broken Star as our leader. Chapter 39 Yellow Fang, wake up! Something was prodding Yellow Fang in her flank. She opened her eyes to see Bright Flower standing beside her nest. Her fur was fluffed up, and her eyes wide with anxiety. What's the matter? Yellow Fang leaped to her paws. Is it the kits? Bright Flower nodded. They're not in the nursery. They were with me when I went to sleep, but now they're gone. We'll find them, Yellow Fang mewed reassuringly. She looked for Running Nose to ask him for help in the search, but he was deeply asleep after the long journey from the Moonstone, and she decided not to disturb him unless she had to. Stifling a trickle of fear, Yellow Fang led the way out into the clearing. The night was dark, the moon showing fitfully in a sky ribbed with cloud. Let's try the apprentice's den first, she suggested. But when she and Bright Flower peered into the den, they saw only the four remaining cats in training, curled up and snuffling gently in their sleep. The warrior's den, Bright Flower guessed. When she poked her head through the branches, Yellowfang saw nothing but dark lumps of slumbering fur. 
Thrusting herself completely inside, she roused Clawface, who was nearest with a sharp tug on his tail. Ow, get off! Clawface looked up sleepily. Oh, it's you, Yellowfang. What do you want? Have you seen Brightflower's kits? Yellowfang asked. They've gone missing. Clawface shook his head. They're not here, but maybe they snuck out with the night patrol. They talked about wanting to join it tonight, but I told them they had to wait until they were apprenticed. Like they'd listen, Yellowfang thought. Thanks, Clawface, she mewed. The gray tom curled up again as Yellowfang left the den and joined Brightflower, who was pacing back and forth across the clearing. Her expression cleared as Yellowfang told her what Clawface had said. That must be where they are, Brightflower exclaimed. They should be fine if they're with their clanmates. As she spoke, the night patrol pushed its way back into the camp. Blackfoot leading russet fur and wolfstep. Mintkit and Marigold Kit weren't with them. Yellowfang and Brightflower bounded over. Have you seen my kits? Brightflower demanded as she halted in front of Blackfoot. Blackfoot shook his head. No, should we have? Brightflower let out a wail of terror, and Yellowfang rested her tail tip on her shoulder. They're missing. Clawface thought they might have gone with you, she explained to Blackfoot. We'll go out at once to look for them, Russet Fur meowed, her voice full of concern. Wolfstep nodded. Do you think they tried to follow us, but couldn't keep up? It's possible, Yellowfang admitted. We went through the trees as far as the border with the unknown forest, Russet Fur told her and then along by the two-leg place and back here. Great star, clan, Brightflower exclaimed, flattening her ears in distress. They could have been stolen by two legs. They're probably just lost, Yellowfang calmed her. They're only half a moon old. They couldn't have gotten far. I'll follow the patrol's route and look for them. And meanwhile, she added, knowing how important it was to keep Brightflower occupied, you should give the rest of the camp a really thorough search, Russet Fur, perhaps you could help? She looked meaningfully at the warrior, trying to indicate that Brightflower needed some company. Of course, Russet Fur meowed. Let me know if you want me to search the forest later on. Yellowfang hurried out of the camp and picked up the trail of the night patrol. The cloud cover had thickened and the moon was scarcely visible. It was hard going through the trees and undergrowth, and Yellowfang concentrated so as not to lose the scent. Then she heard the bark of a fox from somewhere up ahead and quickened her pace. I hope it hasn't found the kits. Another harsh tang mixed with the traces of the night patrol. Yellowfang's heart started to pound, and she broke into a run, her nostrils flared with the scent of blood. The night patrol had reported no skirmishes on any of the boundaries, yet somewhere a cat was badly hurt. Yellowfang's fur stood on end as all her instincts pricked with alarm. Something is terribly wrong. She burst through a line of trees and stumbled to a halt in a small clearing. Panting hard, she gazed around and saw a thin shaft of starlight breaking through the branches. It rested on two tiny heaps of fur, as still as rocks in the cold air. One tortoise shell, one gray, both ripped apart by the jaws of some cruel creature who couldn't even be bothered to stay and eat his prey. Oh, no. Starkland, not even you could be this cruel. Yellowfang bounded across the clearing to where the little bodies lay, their blood spattering the ferns. She bent over them, desperately checking for signs of life, and opened herself to their pain in the hope that it would prove they were still alive. But she was too distraught to be sure if she could feel the flicker that would tell her there was still hope. Desperately summoning her medicine cat skills, Yellowfang looked around for anything nearby that she could treat them with or pad their wounds. But the clearing was barren. No sign of a scrap of cobweb or marigold leaf. Clinging to the last traces of hope, Yellowfang curled her body around the kits, licking their still warm fur. Come on, little ones, live. Crashing paw steps disturbed her, followed by a ghastly wail. Yellowfang looked up to see bright flowers standing on the other side of the clearing, staring in horror. Broken Star was just behind her. What happened? Broken Star demanded. I found them like this, Yellowfang replied, her voice shaking. It must have been a fox. Broken Star sniffed the air. I don't smell any fox. It was here, 
Yellowfang insisted. I heard it just before I found them. Brightflower padded forward and gazed down at the two tiny shapes. My babies. My babies. Yellowfang stared at Broken Star. You need to look for the fox. It could be close by. Yellowfang, I can only pick up your scent, Broken Star mewed quietly. Come back to camp with me. What about the fox? There is no fox here, Broken Star growled. Come. Dazed, Yellowfang rose to her paws. Her fur was sticky with blood, and her mouth was full of the taste of death. I'll carry one of the kits, she mewed. No, Broken Star ordered. I'll send warriors to bring them. Bright Flower, you wait here. Bright Flower took Yellow Fang's place and folded her body around her kits. She didn't look up at Yellow Fang or Broken Star as they left the clearing. Broken Star padded beside Yellow Fang as they returned to camp. The moon was setting by the time they reached the clearing. The sky was gray with cloud, and there was a tang of rain in the air. All the cats were out of their dens, busily searching for the kits. Boulder was the first to notice Yellowfang and halted, staring at her. Gradually, the other cats realized that she had returned and stopped what they were doing, until Yellowfang felt as if the gaze of every cat in the clan was fixed on her. She could read shock in their eyes, and a flicker of unease joined the grief she felt for Mint Kit and Marigold Kit. Russet fur, frog tail. Broken Star's voice cut into the silence, and he beckoned with his tail. Follow our scent trail, and bring Bright Flower and the kits back to the camp. He waited until the two warriors had left, then crossed to the foot of the clan rock, jerking his head for Yellowfang to follow him. Come closer, he ordered the clan, as if he was too distressed to leap onto the rock and summon them formally. As the clan gathered, silent and apprehensive, Running Nose bounded across to Yellowfang from the medicine cat's den. Are you hurt? He gasped. All this blood. It's not my blood, Yellowfang choked out, as if telling him would make the terrible truth more real. It's the kits. A stunned murmur rose from the clan, and Brackenfoot stepped forward, his eyes huge with fear. Tell me what happened. I found them in a clearing, Yellowfang began. Broken Star cut her off with a lash of his tail. Yellowfang went to look for the kids after Bright Flower told her they were missing, he announced. When I found her, she was with the kids, but they were both dead. Yellowfang claimed they had been attacked by a fox. A fox? Newt Speck exclaimed, her eyes wide with fear. On our territory, it could kill us all. We have to send out a patrol to track it, Blackfoot meowed. More fearful cries came from the clan, but Broken Star silenced them with a flick of his tail. I found no trace of Fox anywhere near the kits. Then how did they die? Stumpy Tail asked. Yes, how? Deerfoot echoed. We have to know. Broken Star took a step away from Yellowfang. Only one cat knows the truth, he meowed softly. Brackenfoot stared at Yellowfang in horror. Did you kill them? He whispered. Of course not, Yellowfang shrieked. In her worst nightmares, she had never imagined that her own father could accuse her of something so terrible. They were dead when I found them. We have no reason to believe that Yellowfang killed them, Broken Star put in. Why would she? She's been under a lot of strain recently with all the battles, Wolfstep pointed out. She said she didn't want to treat my scratch because it was a waste of herbs, Dawn Paw added with an indignant flourish of her tail. Yes, she hasn't been herself lately, Tanglebur meowed. I asked her about a pain in my belly, and she practically bit my ear off. But then gave you a juniper berry to take the pain away, Running Nose reminded her, but no cat seemed to be listening. She acts like the whole clan is a nuisance, Cinderfur sniffed. Newt Speck stepped forward with a furious hiss. Are you seriously suggesting that Yellowfang would kill our own kits so she wouldn't have to treat their injuries later on? There was a deafening silence as Yellowfang waited for her clanmates to realize that Newt Speck was speaking sense. It was broken by a wail from Brightflower, who had just entered the camp. 
Russet fur and frogtail followed, each carrying a pitiful broken scrap of fur. Bright flower plunged at Yellow Fang with a snarl. Did you kill my kits? Yellow Fang was frozen to the spot with horror. Before she could react, Running Nose leaped in front of her. Don't be ridiculous, Bright Flower, he yowled. Broken Star held up his tail for silence. We will never know what happened tonight, he meowed, his voice cracking with sorrow. All we know is that two young kids, two promising warriors, are dead, and that Yellow Fang was with them. Yellow Fang, as our medicine cat, there must have been something you could have done. I, I tried, but, Yellow Fang began to protest. Broken Star ignored her. Russet Fur, he continued. Is there any evidence that she treated their wounds? Reluctantly, Russet Fur shook her head. No, Broken Star. They were dead when I found them, Yellow Fang exclaimed. Her head was whirling. She couldn't believe that this was happening to her, that any cat would take these crazy accusations seriously. Frogtail? Were their bodies cold? Broken Star went on. Frogtail ducked his head. Well, no. Yowls of shock and hatred rose from the clan. Rowan, Barry, and Nutwhisker both pushed through the crowd to stand beside Yellow Fang, along with Running Nose and Newt Speck, but their protests went unheard. Yellow Fang knew that there was too much suspicion, too much grief over these latest deaths to expect a rational response from her clanmates. Broken Star turned to face her. Yellow Fang, you cannot stay here. For your own safety, you must leave. You mean, j join the elders? Yellow Fang stammered. I could be at peace there, and still help my clanmates if they came to me. No. Broken Star curled his lip, showing a hint of sharp yellow teeth. I cannot protect you within this territory after what has happened. Your clanmates are too angry over these deaths. You have to understand that I don't want to do this, but I have no choice. I must banish you from Shadow Clan. And his words, everything became clear to Yellow Fang. Clear as spring water gurgling from a rock. She had threatened to speak with Star Clan about what Broken Star was doing, get him stripped of his leadership and his nine lives. And this was his way of making sure that never happened. She had made herself a problem, and he was solving it. Yellow Fang took a deep breath. Broken Star had scared this clan into silence for too long. Fury overwhelmed her fear. If she held her tongue any longer, she betrayed all her clanmates, including the memory of the dead kits. This is exactly what you wanted, she hissed. You couldn't have known that those kits would die, but this is your perfect opportunity to get rid of me. I am the Shadow Clan Medicine Cat. This is where I belong. Blackfoot stepped forward, his voice weighty and regretful. Not anymore. Yellow Fang, come, I'll escort you to the border. He reached out his tail to rest it on her shoulder, but Yellow Fang batted it away. Get off me, she snapped. I'll find my own way. Still dazed, she stumbled toward the entrance. Her clanmates parted to let her go. I'm so sorry, Running Nose gasped, bounding alongside her. I'll prove it was a fox. You'll be back soon. Come to the next Half Moon Gathering. Yellow Fang stopped at the entrance and looked at him. Running nose, she meowed. You have been a dear and loyal friend, but I cannot stay here. Not as long as Broken Star rules. This is not the Shadow Clan I pledged to serve. Glancing at the cats clustered around the clan rock, she added, They are lucky to have you. May Star Clan light your path, always. Yellow Fang, Running Nose wailed. Yellow Fang couldn't listen to him anymore. Turning, she plunged through the brambles and staggered out of the camp. Chapter 40 
half mad with grief and fury, Yellow Fang stumbled across the territory, howling her rage to the stars. Finding herself at the edge of the marshes, she turned her paw steps away from the elders' den. I can't unleash this disaster on them. They'll find out soon enough. At last, the entrance to the tunnel that led to four trees loomed up in front of Yellow Fang. Forcing her paws to carry her forward, she padded into the echoing darkness. Water dripped around her, sounding unnaturally loud, and her paws slipped on the slimy tunnel floor. After what seemed like seasons, Yellow Fang spotted a pale gap in front of her and clambered out of the tunnel to see that dawn light was seeping into the sky. Her limbs heavy with exhaustion, she staggered across the last few fox lengths of Shadow Clan territory and half scrambled, half fell into the hollow where she came to rest in the shelter of the spiky branches of a holly bush. Yellow Fang lay in the undergrowth while the morning light strengthened into a chilly gray day. Soon a thin rain began to fall, but Yellow Fang had no energy to find better shelter. She tried to sleep, but the heavy branches of the four great oaks loomed over her, rustling in a threatening way that sounded more like thunder. Yellow Fang stayed where she was, too stunned to think about moving or eating, the harsh words of her clanmates echoing over and over again in her mind. Star Clan, can you see me? Do you know what Broken Star has done now? There was no reply, no sign that her ancestors had even heard. If Yellow Fang had felt alone before, that was nothing compared to her solitude now. Eventually, the dead holly leaves underneath her began to prickle through her ungroomed pelt, and she hauled herself to her paws. Night had fallen again, with barely a hint of starlight to pick out the four giant oaks. Not that it mattered to Yellow Fang. If Star Clan had given up on her, four trees meant nothing except a place where too many cats came to crow about hollow victories every full moon. She started walking not because she had anywhere to go, but because she was tired of staying still. Her belly growled, but she felt no hunger. Maybe she would eat again one day, maybe not. She couldn't be bothered to care. She thought of Marigold Kit and Mint Kit, cold and still in the shadows. She hoped they were in Star Clan now, playing with her daughters, being cared for by Silver Flame. They were better off there than in Shadow Clan, where broken stars seemed to delight in sending cats to die before they were old enough to catch their own prey. But that didn't stop Yellow Fang's dreadful feelings of guilt, that she hadn't been able to help them. Oh, Marigold Kit, Mint Kit, I'm so sorry you had to die alone and scared. I would have saved you if I could, I promise. Yellow Fang stumbled up the side of the hollow and through a line of ferns that caught in her tangled pelt. She was dimly aware of scent markers, thunderclans, she thought, but she couldn't bring herself to care. She was a medicine cat. She could go wherever she wanted, or if she wasn't a medicine cat, she would be chased off like a rogue and be hungry and lost somewhere else. It didn't matter. Her legs started to tremble with tiredness, even though she had barely traveled out of sight of four trees, she pushed her way into a clump of ferns and lay down beneath the arching green fronds. The horror of being exiled, her grief for the kids, and her exhaustion sapped her strength so that she couldn't block her senses any more. Her body convulsed as she felt the pain of her clanmates' wounds far away, the agony of a vixen giving birth somewhere nearby. The flash of fear and anguish as a mouse fell prey to a ThunderClan warrior's paws. The suffering of every creature in the forest flooded through her limbs and assailed her heart. At last, worn out, she slept. Yellowfang was never sure how many sunrises she saw from under the ferns, drifting in and out of consciousness. She knew that she ought to hunt to groom herself, and to find shelter as far as possible from these Star Clan cursed clans. But for a long time she couldn't rouse herself to do anything. 
Eventually, she became aware of sunlight filtering through the ferns, warming her pelt, reminding her of a time when she had been happy in her home among the pine trees. A slow, burning anger began to replace her grief. My clan banished me, and I have done nothing wrong. I will not give in. A trickle of strength returned to her limbs. She could scent water and hear the gurgling of a nearby stream. I need to drink, hunt, and get off ThunderClan territory. But as she forced herself to her paws, she heard a faint growl from the direction of the stream. Peering out from among the ferns, she spotted a young cat with a flame-colored coat heading straight for her in the hunter's crouch, as if he was stalking prey. Yellow Fang realized that the wind must have carried her scent straight toward him. Fox tongue! A Thunderclan cat would have to turn up just now. He's bound to stop me if I try to escape. Yellow Fang unsheathed her claws, sinking them into the soft forest floor. I'll have to fight my way out. Yellow Fang eased herself from the ferns and crept into the shelter of a clump of bushes. Now the breeze worked to her advantage and she caught the reek of ThunderClan. The young cat paused, glancing around him with a puzzled expression. He sniffed the air again, as if he couldn't work out what had happened to the scent. Prey doesn't keep still, mouse brain. Letting out a snarl, Yellow Fang burst out of the bushes and slammed into the orange tom, knocking him sideways. He let out a screech of shock. Yellow Fang felt a savage delight as her paws clamped down on his shoulders and her jaws closed on the back of his neck. Meow! The young cat grunted. For a heartbeat, he struggled to free himself, then suddenly relaxed his muscles with a howl of alarm and went limp. Still pinning him down with her paws, Yellow Fang opened her jaws and let out a yowl of triumph. Ah, a puny apprentice, she hissed. Easy prey for Yellow Fang. She bit down once more on the ThunderClan cat's neck, but at the same moment, he surged upward, exploding with all the strength of a powerful young body. Yellow Fang let out a snarl of surprise as she was thrown clear, tumbling back into a gorse bush. The Tom steadied himself on his paws and gave his pelt a shake. Not such easy prey, huh? He meowed. Yellow Fang ripped herself free from the prickly branches, hissing curses at the thorns. Not bad, young apprentice she spat back. But you'll need to do a lot better. The young cat puffed out his chest. You're in ThunderClan's hunting ground. Move on. Who's going to make me? Yellow Fang curled her lip. I will hunt. Then I will leave. Or maybe I'll just stay a while. Enough talk, the young cat flashed back at her. Yellow Fang sensed a change in him. She could tell that he was eager to fight to defend his territory and protect his clan. For an apprentice, he has courage, she thought with the first flicker of respect. I'll need to use a little cunning here. Dipping her head, breaking eye contact with the young Tom, she began to back off. No need to be hasty now, she purred in a silky tone. The apprentice wasn't deceived. He let out a furious growl and leaped forward. Yellow Fang sprang forward to meet him, digging her claws into his shoulders, and they rolled over together in a whirl of claws and teeth. Breaking free, Yellow Fang reared up on her hind legs and lunged at the young Tom's head. To her frustration, he jerked away just in time, and her teeth closed on empty air a mouse length from his ear. Before Yellow Fang could lash out again, the apprentice swiped at her with one paw, dealing her a hard blow over her ear. Stunned, she dropped to all fours shaking her head to clear it. As she tried to recover, her opponent flung himself forward and clamped his jaws tight on her back leg. Yellow Fang screeched, whipping around to snap at the young Tom's tail. Satisfaction flooded through her as her teeth connected. The apprentice ripped his tail from her grip and lashed it in rage. His green eyes gleamed with fury. Yellow Fang crouched for a fresh attack, but she could feel her strength ebbing. Her breath wheezed, and hunger gnawed at her like a live rat in her belly. For a heartbeat, the flame-colored cat hesitated. Yellow Fang lunged, trying to reach up onto his shoulders and get a killing grip, but now she was hampered by her wounded leg. Get off, 
the apprentice snapped, arching his back in an effort to throw her off. But Yellow Fang managed to dig her claws in and held on tight, using her greater weight to force the young cat to the ground. He twisted as he tried to avoid her thrashing hind legs. Once more, they rolled over together, biting and snapping. Yellow Fang knew that she had lost her chance to win. Her hind legs would hardly support her, and she loosened her grip on the young Tom. Had enough yet? He growled. Never, Yellow Fang spat. But her injured leg gave way, and she slumped to the ground. Glaring at the apprentice, she hissed. If I wasn't so hungry and tired, I'd have shredded you into mouse dust. Her mouth twisted in pain. Finish me off. I won't stop you. And then it will be over. No more pain. No more struggle. The young Tom hesitated. Something in his eyes that Yellow Fang couldn't read. What are you waiting for? Yellow Fang taunted him. You're dithering like a kitty pet. Rage flared in his green eyes. I'm an apprentice warrior of Thunder Clan, he snarled. Yellow Fang narrowed her eyes. She had seen the cat flinch at her words, and she knew she had hit a nerve. Ha, she snorted. Don't tell me ThunderClan are so desperate they have to recruit kitty pets now. ThunderClan are not desperate, the Tom hissed. Prove it then, Yellowfang challenged him. Act like a warrior and finish me off. You'll be doing me a favor. The apprentice stared at her. She saw his muscles relax as a spark of curiosity woke in his eyes. You seem in an awful hurry to die, he meowed. Yeah. Well, that's my business, mouse fodder, Yellow Fang snapped. What's your problem, kitty? Are you trying to talk me to death? But her hunger and exhaustion were sapping her strength with every heartbeat. She knew she could do no more. She was at this cat's mercy. Has it really come to this, Star Clan? Is this the end I deserve? Wait here, the young cat ordered at last. Are you kidding, kitty? I'm going nowhere, Yellowfang grunted, limping toward a patch of soft heather. She flopped down and began licking her leg wound. The flame-colored Tom turned, then glanced back at her over his shoulder with a hiss of exasperation before heading for the trees. Yellowfang watched him go. She still felt numb with shock, well past caring what would happen to her. Will ThunderClan keep me a prisoner? or send me back to Shadow Clan, she wondered. She knew she didn't have the strength to get off ThunderClan territory before she was found by the Ginger Tom or some other patrol. Did this mean that she was giving up without a fight? And yet there was something about that bold little apprentice, some spark that reminded her of herself when she was young. Not that I'd let him know it, arrogant mouse brain, she muttered. She would wait for him to come back. I have no clan now, no destiny, no place to be, and no duties to tend to. Let the future bring what it will. Yellowfang sighed, but a quiet determination began to grow inside her. Somehow she felt less bleak, less hopeless. This wasn't her home, but the heavy branched trees and whispering ferns promised more peace than she had known for a while. She didn't know any ThunderClan cats well. She didn't know any cats well, apart from Running Nose, perhaps. But Broken Star had denounced them for being too full of pity and soft on their enemies. So perhaps they would view her with kindness, a refugee from the troubled clan across the border. Besides, whatever they did to her could not be worse than what her own son had done. My son. Yellowfang drew a long, quivering breath. She could not leave the forest. Even if she had to seek shelter in a hostile clan, there was still work for her to do. Questions that only she could answer. Vengeance that she had to seek on behalf of Marigold Kit and Mint Kit. Cloud Pelt and the Banished Elders all the cats whom Broken Star had destroyed with his ambition. Alone, hungry, crushed by betrayal. 
Yellow Fang made the most solemn vow of her life. I know my path will cross with broken stars again, and one day I will do something to stop this tide of fire and blood that he has unleashed on the forest. This is McLeod Andrews. We hope you have enjoyed this unabridged production of Warriors Super Edition Yellow Fang's Secret by Aaron Hunter. Presented by HarperCollins and Harper Audio. This program was produced by Mosaic Audio. The director was Zach Olson. Executive producer, Almeida Bainan. Text copyright 2012 by Working Partners Limited. Production copyright 2021 by HarperCollins Publishers. Series created by Working Partners Limited. All rights reserved. Thank you for listening.